The and first year of marriage has been extremely hard for yeah. us, hasn't it? This is probably something that we do <laughs> struggle with. We don't know whether Fab's fertility issues have got worse. Like, we're having to like put a lot of effort into our marriage at the moment, aren't we? Because yeah. like... To we're... the point where we actually rang well, an we ambulance. To, yeah. Ellen has stupid reasons <laughs> like that. She <laughs> talks like a counselling session for us. <laughs> Hello everybody and welcome back to our channel. So we thought that today we would do a Q&A because we haven't done a Q&A for ages. No. Life has kind of like been yeah. a bit crazy recently. Yeah. And this week especially, I've been away a lot. I've just got back from a stag do literally last night. I've got another two day shoot yeah. that I'm going on um, and it's just going to be a crazy busy week so we haven't had the time to film a vlog plus the boys are poorly as well so we don't want to like film stuff when everyone's a bit poorly so we're just going to do a cat, big old catch, catch up. up yeah because we've not done one for a while so no. we asked you guys over on Instagram for some questions we've actually gained quite a few new followers over on Instagram so if you've come from Instagram to our YouTube hello hi this is like your opportunity to get to know us I guess yeah um, a little bit more so yeah we've asked questions over there so yeah. and if you are a long-term subscriber of ours thank you for the support go and grab yourself a drink and this, this is going to be a chilled yeah. video and we'll be back to the normal schedule next week who challenges fab to film on his own this weekend with the boys well yeah because Al's away again again i am Al's never away, away. should we go into this then what the fact that fab's been away for six days this week Let's do this one. What's your work-life balance at the moment? How do you balance having two toddlers? Um, this is probably something that we do <laughs> struggle with a lot. A lot. Um, being newly self-employed and also having twin boys and working husband and wife is definitely challenging sometimes. Yeah. It obviously has its perks. We absolutely love the fact that we can work together. Yeah. Together. <laughs> together. <laughs> but um, yeah, the work-life balance is hard, isn't it, sometimes? Yeah. What's your take on it? It's hard to balance at the moment because everything's kind of like changing all the time. So the boys were in nursery, but we've decided to take them out of nursery purely because to save financially, like it was a thousand pound a month to put them in nursery for one day a week. Um, and now Fab's mum's offered to have them for um, two days a week. Mm -hmm. So that's going to give us a, a big chunk of time to get like our videos yeah. edited, videos recorded. Yeah. Um, like, cause I don't think people realize, but you actually have to like plan out your content. Like you can't just like shoot and film. Like you've got to yeah. plan stuff out, There's especially a lot like more that goes Instagram. Into it. Yeah. So now that Fab's mum is having the boys for two days a week, that gives us a big chunk of time to actually get stuff done because yeah. we have been struggling a lot with like time to get it done. And like Fab works quite far away filming, like literally the other side of the country filming. So yeah. he's away quite a lot. And sometimes that falls on the days where the boys are at nursery. So yeah, we're still trying to find our feet with it. And then when you try and do work at home with toddlers, as you can imagine, it's just impossible. One, you feel guilty. Yeah. Two, they just want to be in your laptop, you know, pressing the buttons and stuff, which is fine. Yeah. But obviously quite annoying when they keep doing stuff. Yeah, it's, it's tough to balance it, but yeah. when it, whenever it's nap time, it's just like go time for us. Yeah, we yeah. just try and get as much as we I can. I don't know then. what we would do without nap time. No, well, and it's gonna be hard when they're not napping. How do you tell your boys apart on the days when they look spit? Spit, switch spit, spit, spit in, what, the same? I'm yeah, guessing. I guess that means like spit an image of each other. It'd be good to actually say as well, because we get asked a lot about their personality and how it's different, because we've yeah. not really spoken about that. So there's a few ways that we can tell them apart. Noah has a slimmer face than Ari. Ari has more of the rounder face. Noah is more of like the cheeky daredevil twin. He doesn't really listen when you tell him to stop doing something. Yeah. But he does it in like a cheeky way. It's not like a, a bratty way, I guess. It's like a, it's like a, I'm gonna yeah. do it. He will push the boundaries a bit more. more. And then Ari learns off of that, like, okay, Noah can do that, yeah. so I'll do that. And Ari's definitely more of the emotional baby. Like he he's like our Velcro baby. He's just more he? sensitive, more like he analyzes situations a bit yeah. more. Yeah, yeah, it's not as outgoing as Noah. But it's kind of starting to switch now. Like as they get older, Ari's becoming a bit more bossy to, towards Noah and like. Ari gets frustrated say. a lot with Noah. Yeah. But, but it's yeah, they fascinating, are, isn't it? Yeah, they are the completely difference. different though. Like yeah. completely different. Sometimes I even look at them and I'm like, 
how are you twins? Like, it's like you're not even siblings. Like, the, the way they can act sometimes, it's like... Yeah. Whoa, you're And two. what's mad, I think we were chatting to our friend Matt about this. They've got identical genes. Yeah. Yeah, they look... I mean, to you guys, they probably don't, but to us, they look different. They act different, but they've had the same upbringing. Yeah. So how? What is influencing that different... I know, Like, the yeah. brain chemistry, but then like, they surely, like, scientifically, they're the same, right? Yeah, I don't know, so like, I... experiences, they've experienced things differently. What's your next house renovation slash DIY decoration job to do? Uh, next one, we've got to finish our bedroom. There's a few so, bits. So, yeah, the, the bedroom's bedroom. very nearly finished, isn't it? Yeah. Um, and I think it's going to be the garden, guys. Yeah, I'm still doing my office, so that's my focus, but yeah. then now the weather's getting nicer... We say as it's tiffing it down us. Yeah. <laughs> but if you if you didn't see our last video, we've decided now that we're not going to move. No. We're staying at this house and we're yeah. going to just chip away at the DIY stuff. So yeah. expect some more. There's going to be loads DIY coming. Videos. I know yeah. loads of you actually started subscribing to us from our garden renovation at our old house. Yeah. We did our whole garden, completely renovated it ourselves. Yeah. Um, and we are planning to do exactly the same here. Although this garden is that about three times as big, so God knows what we're gonna do. There's a lot more to do here. If you wanna see some really good house uh, project content, go and watch our friends Bethan and Joe. Yeah, because they're doing lo they are just killing it at the moment. They're doing loads of stuff. Yeah. What would be your dream age gap between the boys and baby number three? This always comes up whenever we do q Yeah, and I think we have decided when we're gonna start trying, haven't we? I don't know, is it next year? Yeah. Next year? Is I think tw end of 2025. Start of 2026, we will start trying again. And, I and we haven't decided yet whether or not we're going to, like, document, like, live the process of trying to conceive again because we're not mm. naive to the fact that it could literally take ages, potentially not even happen. We don't know whether Fab's um, fertility issues have got worse because apparently they do get worse with age. So we do need to actually get a test before we, yeah. we wait because if we wait that long, um, it could be that... There's yeah. no hope left, so we need to go and get that sorted, really. Yeah, I do. I'm actually intrigued to see like what the situation is with that, so I need to go and get a test. Yeah, soon. But yeah, we'd love to have another baby when the boys are either just starting school or like when they're in school, when they're basically old enough to be a little bit more independent, like get themselves dressed, not in nappies, yeah, etc., etc. Because I couldn't imagine having three of them to change like having three toddlers toddlers to change nappies yeah. like that would just be whew. oh my word but obviously if fab's um fertility issues are getting worse then we'll act sooner we will act sooner and we They're will probably be the have another baby big brothers though oh my gosh they love They're babies like, yeah they're Don't so they? loving what's the best part about being self-employed for me it's hands down the freedom mm. the time element mm. like you're not constricted to a nine to five or whatever yeah um which is just super handy when you've got kids i honestly think like if if you have the opportunity to be self-employed with children it is yeah yeah the time element of it is incredible yeah the time yeah. that you're investing into your work is to benefit you not to benefit higher up that's Do you know true what I mean? like yeah, you're yeah, yeah. It's your business, it's your. It's something that you're creating. So you know that every hour, whether mm. they be harder hours potentially than what you would work before, Yeah. it's that you're investing it back into yourself. Like it's like a cycle of, right, okay, I'm gonna work really hard here, but then it's going back into me. Like it's yeah. not going into... It's much easier to do the work because you know that you're gonna benefit directly from it. Yeah, and like the time that we get as a family, like although you work away a lot, um, yeah the time that we get to spend together is like you get more time in the day i guess yes would you want a boy or a girl next time um i mean a like, baby i don't I don't, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think there's a problem with no. like saying oh i would love to have a boy or a girl because we've obviously got two boys so we would love to have a little girl yeah but we wouldn't be like, oh, we've got a boy. No. Like it would, that would not be the case at all because our two little boys are like the yeah. best things ever. Every baby that we have is an absolute miracle. Yeah. So whether it be a boy or a girl, it's a baby at the end of the day. And mm. But 
But that I doesn't go to say, nice. yeah, we would really, really love a little girl next and then we're done then. Yeah. <laughs> and if we don't have a girl, we'll get <laughs> uh, Is it likely for you to have another set of twins? Yes. Yes, I believe it's... Once you have twins, you're like way more likely to have another yeah. set of twins. We were told that the by someone. The midwife was saying yeah. when we were pregnant with twins, it's like, I'm pretty sure she said it's like 80% more likely. How though? If anyone but can I, confirm that for yeah. us, Yeah, I don't know, know if she was just scaring us. Maybe, yeah. Just trying to keep us <laughs> yeah. from... Take quite, a contraception! Yeah. <laughs> There's quite a few questions on like why we want to move to a new build. Why were we thinking of moving? And just in case you missed that, well, let's just recap here why... So me and Fab have always, always, always loved new builds. Me probably more so than Fab, but you do like them, don't yeah. you? Yeah, yeah. Well, our first house was a new <coughs> build, so yeah. like we had, and we had a great experience there. So yeah. I have nothing against it. And some people really like, like quirkinesses of old houses and like the character and the stuff that comes with old, like older houses, whereas me and Fab kind of like to have a, blank canvas yeah. and to like make it our own don't we yeah also ghosts scare the hell out of me <laughs> <laughs> so i get really paranoid that somebody's like died in the house before us that they're gonna come back and haunt us where but that could happen a on a build. new that, they could be building no, on like no, a no. burial site for all you know you don't get that. You don't get that ghostly feeling. No, we definitely had a ghost in our old new build. Do you remember? Well, yeah, the, the like lampshade used to fall off, but that wasn't no. scary. And I saw someone at the, by the side of the bed oh. on my birthday. <laughs> Ellen has stupid reasons like that. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna stay here, and we're basically gonna turn this into a new build. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where she thinks all this money's yeah, coming from, but <laughs> yeah, there's loads about siblings when... for the boys, kids. We we do want more kids. Yeah. Okay. So People... everybody keep your fingers crossed. Yeah. Love Island thoughts. Love Island thoughts. The so same, as we're filming this. I can't remember any of their names. No. Do you know what? I actually, usually I watch the first episode and I think oh, the same people again, but I actually thought... It's a little seems bit juicy. A bit, seems a bit like, yeah, mm, better Like Joey time. Essex. Oh, yeah. The spoiler. But... No, well, it's going to be not. Okay. Joey Essex is in there, and I actually love Joey Essex. Yeah. So yeah. I think that's going to be He's funny. actually pretty sexy. But what, his... Why is he in there, though? Well, that's so random. I know. Like, he's a celebrity. I couldn't imagine trying to hold a conversation with him. <laughs> really? Why? Yeah. He's. I think he's cool. I think he definitely plays more dumb than he is. Yeah, it's like part character. of his like character, isn't he? Yeah. But yeah, he is pretty like spicy. All right, oh. No, he is. But he's like, no, he looks a little bit like you, I think. Joey like, Essex? He's got like blue like, eyes. The brown hair, the tall nurse, the stocky nurse. Joey Essex is like skinny and... No, he's not. Yeah, he no, is. No, he's not. Yeah, he is. Can we see more of your running? What's your favourite run gear? Oh, don't encourage her anymore because that's all she talks about. <laughs> no. Follow Ellen, I would say, if you want to see the running content. Yeah, there's lo I, I post loads of running stuff over on my uh, personal Instagram, which is L Bedard. You should do um, a reel, actually, of all your running gear, your favourite mm, running gear. Guys, like, I actually think I might be a runner now. You're definitely a runner. I went for a run with her the other day, and she actually was fast. My pace is getting, getting well quick. Yeah, it actually, actually felt actually... like a run instead of like a fast walk this time. How do you keep the connection with husband? Oh, God, that's another thing we're struggling with, guys, to be quite honest with you. Um, I don't what, know. What connection? I like things, like we're having to like put a lot of effort into our marriage at the moment, aren't we? Because yeah. like things are busy. Like when you when you work with your husband, live obviously live with your husband, you've got kids with your husband, have recently got married, uh, Fab's work is taking off a lot. Like it's hard to kind of like, put time into your marriage because there's only 24 hours in a day so we are now having to like do the whole thing of like setting time aside to be like right today or like this evening is our time what yeah. do we want to do we're asking people to like come over and sit with the boys at night time so that we can go out and like go out for a meal together and not talk about work yeah that's, and just... i think that's a hard thing right is basically part of our work is just documenting our life so it's really hard to like the lines are always blurred between yes. what is work and what yeah. is not work yeah um and i think sometimes we can fall into the trap of like no, how do I say of this? mixing so so when we're filming as putting that as okay well we've spent the day together where it's not like quality time that's spent together because we're working essentially um, yeah. and 
so the ways that we're trying to like like keep the spark alive and stuff is we're going out for meals without the boys. We're not talking about work. Um, we're making time for each other. And also another thing that me and Fab absolutely love is going to the gym together. Like our whole relationship before the boys, we went to the gym together about six times a week. Like yeah. that was our time together, wasn't it? And just yeah. working out together. And we kind of like like pushing each other as well, don't we? In the sense yeah. of like that for us, like reignites that spark, doesn't it? Us training yeah. together. And then it's just, not easy. Like no, we're not just gonna sit here and be like, yeah, we've got the perfect marriage because it is hard, especially with our situation. Like yeah. it is difficult. But we're... I was actually speaking to my best friend the other day, and she was listening to a podcast about newlyweds or something, and she said that they had somebody on there who was like a marriage. I don't know, marriage counsellor, marriage something or other. Yeah. And they were saying that the majority of people get divorced after their first year of marriage because the first year of marriage is the hardest. Really? Yeah, I think like trying to adjust to like being married and like where is the line with being married now? Okay, and not feeling like, oh, we're married now so everything else can kind of like slip behind. Yeah. Like just... You have to still work. You have to still work at it. And that's what it's going to be like for the rest of our lives. Like, you have got to work at... It's like anything. It's like a friendship. It's like... I feel like the complacency is the biggest killer of anything, I think. Yeah. Career, relationships, yeah. like fitness, anything. If you get complacent yeah. and you stop progressing... Yeah. Then that's when that, things go downhill. Yeah. And communication. Communication is absolutely huge. Like, when me and Fab don't talk, but like, we're busy with work, et cetera, et cetera, that's when we fall out the most because we're both feeling emotions, but we're not talking about the emotions because we're busy with other things. So, yeah, communication, making dates, doing things that you enjoy. Also, as well, like, spending time with your friends, like... Like, me and Fab share a lot of our friends and just spending quality time with... Yeah. Like them. Yeah. And not with the with the babies around because yeah. you don't yeah, really yeah, get to yeah. like have that like adult nurse yeah. with the kids around. Yeah. That's the thing is we're just mum and dad majority of the time. Yeah. So we can't be husband or wife. Yeah. But we're working on it. We are. And the and first year of marriage has been extremely hard for yeah. us, hasn't it? Like yeah. we we've bickered like we've like no tomorrow yeah but then like we were saying we've also started our started being self-employed together yeah. there's so much that's change straight after. there's been a lot of change yeah. but we, we do know we, we, know we love each other yeah that's what i was gonna say and that's the core is like we do love each other yeah we're just trying to find our feet with everything we are going to get frustrated but yeah. ultimately we love each other and we've chosen to get married and to have children together for a reason exactly and i think always having that in the back of your mind is going to help keep things yeah like yeah. Alive. Yeah. It actually helps doing videos like this because we wouldn't <laughs> usually <laughs> actually talk this like a counselling session for us. <laughs> Straight on to your worst habits. Oh, ooh. Ellen's is leaving things out in this on the kitchen side. Like she'll make she'll make something and it'll just be like all left out. Like the proteins out, the strawberries are out, everything's out. You do that too. If I'm really busy, I do, but I'll put it away. Okay, eventually. let's get going then. Um, or she leaves skid marks in the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually really paranoid what? about stuff What's like that. What's mine then? I'm intrigued. Um, oh, I know. Let I already me know. just have let a Let me guess think. it. Leaving the wardrobe doors open. Yes. That's, Leaving yeah. the wardrobe doors open. Bear in mind the wardrobe is on my side of the bed, so when I get out of bed in the middle of the night, <coughs> straight into the wardrobe doors. And also, when I have just cleaned all of the bathrooms, which, by the way, I hate doing. Like, that is the worst job. Fab will go and decide, oh, you know what? I'll have a full body shave and then just shave my beard and leave it everywhere. No, I don't, well, I don't leave it. I try and tidy it up. But it's some of the follicles... <sighs> If you had one wish for the boy's future, what would it be? To understand that money doesn't bring happiness. Really? Yeah. And to not grow up thinking that I've got to be rich to be happy. And to find happiness in other things. Yes. But mine would just be that they're always safe and not... Because I do think it's like a masculine toxicness. Toxic... That money... Yeah. That men grow up thinking that they have to have money in order to be happy. Do you think? Yeah. I want them to know that like well, yeah, that happiness comes from love and comes from from doing things that you enjoy and 
Yeah, and stuff that is like a that, good one. Rather than just thinking, I've got to go to work nine to five because I've got to get rich, I've got to get money because that's how I'm going to be happy. Yeah, that is a huge one. That is an absolutely huge one. But it's difficult for males, especially because you are like naturally the biology of a male. You want to be the provider. Yeah, but I, like I know, but I don't. Is... I wish they. I don't want them to grow up like that. No. I don't want them to grow up and think, oh, I've got to. I've got to work. A a job that I don't want to work. No, no, definitely Because not. that's just what men should do. I want them to, to like... Yeah, be happy. I want them to be happy. I want them to have a family. I want them to... But mine would yeah. be just be kind, be a kind person, put good out into the world, which I th I, I'm very confident they're going to. Because yeah. I think if you put good out into the world, then you good will good come back. back. Yeah. Be the type of person where you would see, like, you'd see them sticking up for someone. Like they that. They already do. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> we were in this cafe the other day and a little girl, obviously was just playing, messed around, like pushed Noah and Ari went storming over and pushed, pushed her back. Her. And even her, the little girl's mum was like, oh, he's just sticking up for his brother. Yeah, like but she was, was a like, bit like, oh, okay. How often do you film? YouTube, we film... Twice a week at the moment. Every weekend, basically, yeah. is a family one. Then Elle will film another separate one or I will film another separate one. Instagram Thursdays usually are a day that like Al and I will sp like spend time banking reels. Yeah. Which our reels have been killing it lately. Yeah. We've, we've been really lucky that they're just doing... We've, we've found our algorithm, haven't we've we? we found, yeah, our niche. And reels are so satisfying because you can get loads of them done in a day. There's quite a few questions on like the milk ladder and stuff. If you're new here and you don't know, our boys had CMPA. They were diagnosed at six weeks old. Um, we attempted the milk ladder at 11 months. I think you're meant to actually start it a bit sooner than that. So when they were first diagnosed at six weeks, I felt horrific guilt, like mum guilt, because I was trying to like um, breastfeed the boys and obviously I was having dairy and it was making them sick. Looking back, it was a bit like, my. Yeah. it was clearly my hormones were all over the place, but the guilt that I felt from making my babies ill from my milk. Yeah. Like, like it was huge, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. And that first bottle that we gave them on the dairy fridge, do you remember? Mm, and I oh just stood over the cot, like yeah. crying my yeah. eyes out because they weren't screaming or grunting in pain and rolling around because Yeah, it was the worst. Seeing your child milk. in pain is like the worst feeling yeah. ever. So we did lay off trying the milk ladder until 11 months. I'm pretty sure you meant to start it before that. Um, but then when we did try it, they literally failed at the first step, didn't they? They yeah. had like a crumb of a biscuit and then when they went up to half a biscuit, they reacted. So Badly as well. They had like <coughs> uh, blood in, in their, their nappies, nappies and stuff. like quite a lot. Yeah, it was... To the point where we actually rang well, an ambulance to, yeah, because yeah. it was like within the space of an hour. Yeah. It was like really... But yeah, weird. It was weird because then the second time we tried it... We tried it again at just before 18 months. They're nearly 20 months now, so two months ago. No, it must have been like three months ago. Mm, yeah. And they have passed it. They're now having cow's milk, although their skin is flaring up, and I don't know if that's related to the... Oh, uh, really? It is uh, yeah, not massively. I don't know, because I took them swimming, and I don't know if it's from the swimming or from the milk. So yeah. We're, we're just kind of like... Yeah. The situation, they have maybe. really sensitive skin and stuff though yeah um but that i'm so glad now yeah the, this, the, the quality of like their life and our life has just significantly improved because, you don't have to check anything yeah. like you can just go to a restaurant without having to check anything and people with like nut allergies and stuff are probably watching this like get a grip like yeah it could be a lot on, worse. it could be a lot worse but like I guess everybody's feelings and stuff are valid and this is just what we experienced mm. and my heart goes out to people with children who have like egg allergies, nut allergies, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, because it's a very anxious time. Like especially when like you go out for meals and stuff. Like yeah, it's like oh, has, yeah. that, has that got in it? Can you trust somebody to tell you that? Well, that's the thing. You're tr putting your trust in, into somebody else. And we've yeah. had it. Ellen's got a red onion allergy, and we've had it before where you've said that it's been noticed an allergy, and it's yeah. still come with red onions in. Yeah. So like. Yeah. Yeah, you sometimes you put, you put your trust. trust in people and it doesn't... Yeah, and this isn't like... The boys' allergy that they did have wasn't just like that they'll have a sore tummy. It was like that they would bleed. Like, it would literally irritate the inside of them so badly that it 
like it would cause bleeding. Right, we are going to finish this video here. Our little boys are needing us, so we're going to have to go and yeah, bless attend them. to them because they they've got back well. offs. But thank you guys for watching. As always, if you have enjoyed the video, please like the video and don't forget to subscribe. We are on the road to 50k oh, yeah. still. We're I feel like close. we need to have a party when we get there. <laughs> this has been the longest road ever. So if you haven't already, please subscribe um, and we will see you in next week's video. Bye.